really nice. Runs great. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about ignition timing. Factory settings are okay for all around use, but what if you just added a Weber carb or one of those Delta cams or you just had your engine rebuilt and you had it bored over? What if you just want a little more power regardless of the application? Having your engine too far advanced or too far retarded can have negative effects on your engine's performance. Timing that is too retarded can cause your engine to be sluggish or slow. Retarded timing is when the spark happens after the piston has reached top dead center on the compression stroke. It prevents a complete burn of the air-fuel mixture in the cylinder and this results in loss of power. Timing that is too far advanced will cause the spark to happen before the piston reaches top dead center. This causes the air-fuel mixture in the cylinder to ignite before the piston reaches the top of the compression stroke and pushes back down on it and can reduce your power. Too far advanced timing can also cause pre-detonation or engine ping possibly holes in your piston or damage to your cylinder walls. So this is why we highly recommend you get a timing light. I'm going to use this old motor today to kind of demonstrate how to set timing on your engine. And when I say timing, I really mean the ignition timing, not the uh, cam and the crank timing of the engine. I mean the d ignition timing. So I get asked a lot about this. I mean, there's a lot of guys doing Weber swaps and they want to advance the timing. They've heard about it. They don't understand it. So let me just try to break it down a little bit and show you how to do it. All right. Well, before we get too far into this, let me just say that uh, pretty much everything I deal with is a 2.2 motor. Um, I think the 2.0 actually has two marks on the harmonic balancer, but I'm unfamiliar with that. I've only seen that in a manual. Um, so what I want to say about this is on the harmonic balancer or the vibration dampener whatever people want to call it there's going to be an indention a timing mark indention in there that you you know your fingernail can you can find it if you was to you know it may be full of dirt so you'd have to run your fingernail and find it and clean it out with a pick and it's a real good idea to put a little little bit of paint in there or some chalk or something so that it can be picked up by the timing light when it strobes. It's also a real good idea to, if you can get down there to it, is paint these with a paint pen or something so you can see all of this when your timing gun is flashing a light. Um, it really helps to see it so you can set your timing. I realize a lot of this stuff, your, 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 truck's, your, your engine's in your truck. But you can do it. I've done it. You have to get down there very carefully. You might have to take a belt off or two, but you can. It's well worth it to have this cleaned up and painted in order to time your engine. All right. So another word or two on these markings. Of course, the BTDC means before top dead center. The markings. These all markings are before the piston is all the way to the top. These are in two degree increments. Obviously, ten. If you set it there, it would be 10 degrees before top dead center. This, of course, is where the T is, is absolutely top dead center. Um, I usually, I'm going to move it around here. I usually have mine run about 12. Runs great. I have done as much as 14. It's just fine. When they come from factory, it's about, it's at 6. So generally, it's right there. Okay, this is a inductive timing light, meaning it has an inductive pickup. And this is a very simple timing light. You can probably pick pick one of these up on, uh, this one's pretty old. It's probably older than me. Uh, but you could probably pick one of these up on eBay or something. I don't know the cost of this one. Got another one I'm going to show you in a minute. But this is how simple it is. Basically... Uh, be mindful of everything like your fan and everything that's moving because you're going to do this with the engine running. If you have long hair or something, put it in a ponytail. You wouldn't want that to get snatched off. But uh, you're going to want to hook up this to your battery. Pretty simple. Negative goes negative, positive goes positive. 
the inductive pickup. Be careful with it. Don't let it hit the ground. It'll mess it up. What you're gonna wanna do, you're gonna wanna put this around your number one spark plug. Not on it, around it. There's a channel for it. Some of these actually have a directional arrow, meaning they want it to go towards the engine, but this one doesn't. So we're just gonna put that on there, just like that. Let it rest somewhere out of the way. And every time there's a spark going through there, it'll pick it up and this will flash. And as it flashes, you'll be able to see the, the little painted indicator we talked about earlier. Okay, I'm not trying to get fancy on you, but through the miracle of technology, things are always improving. So this one is a Innova 3568 and um, works on the same principle. The inductive piece is very simple. Oh, actually, this one, I don't know if, I, if it picks up on camera, but it does have an arrow and it says plug. So what they want you to do with this one, this one needs to go towards the spark plug. So this one would actually go like this, right around the plug wire and the direction of spark is going towards the plug. So it wants you to put it on that way. But not to get too fancy on you, but this one has a tachometer built in and you can set the dwell and all kinds of things on this one. Uh, it'll do four cylinder, six cylinder, eight cylinder, cylinder engines and um, it's a really nice timing light so just wanted to mention that I'll put a link to this I got it off Amazon I'll put it down in the description under the video I always check the description on every video of anyone on YouTube because that's where they put the goodies okay we got our trusty timing light we got ourselves a 12 millimeter wrench I have a small screwdriver that I could use to plug the vacuum advance, but I think I'm going to use these pliers. And the reason is I don't want to really stretch out my hose to where it fits on the distributor vacuum advance. But if you have one, use it, uh, or you just we're going to clamp it off with these pliers. The distributor has a vacuum advance on it, and it's recommended in the manual in many other places to, to disconnect it while you're setting your baseline timing and uh, the reason for that is this is a, a, a rubber hose going to the base of the carb and it's pulling a vacuum and so when it pulls a vacuum it can skew your settings so you want to not have anything pulling against your distributor so that you can get the timing just right. Uh, I noticed that when I do this, it's very, very small amount of vacuum and sometimes I don't do it, but it's recommended to do it. So we're gonna do it the right way. So you can use a pair of pliers to pinch it. Don't pinch it too tight and that'll be fine. Or you could, you could use something like a golf tee or a screwdriver, a uh, Phillips little small screwdriver, stick in there. You just want, don't want the vacuum advance to be hooked up. And you, you want to pinch it, you don't want a vacuum leak while it's running, so that it, you know, because it could run a little bit terrible with a vacuum leak. All right, so now we're gonna uh, talk about direction. If you want to advance your timing, you're gonna want to rotate this counterclockwise. If you want to retard the timing, just don't know why you would want to, but then you would turn it clockwise. Now when you uh, have your timing gun pointed down there and you're watching the strobe effect on your cr uh, crank, then you'll see it blink right beside the other little indicators down there. And as you advance it, you'll see it, you know, go up the, up the ladder past the 10, or if you retard it clockwise, you'll see it come back towards the top dead center mark. So all we're going to do is check it, and we want to pretty much, for me, and it's my recommendation, I'd probably almost set it at 12, and we're going to let that be it.
All right, so the truck's warmed up. Like I said, there's a moving fan belts and the fan, so if you got long hair, put it up in a ponytail, put a hat on, watch the wires, don't let them get in the way. Okay, it says here 950. And of course, if I did look down there, I'm right at the 12. Hey there, right at the 12. Before top dead center. Alright. I'm going to loosen it. Now we're going to go counterclockwise toward the front of the engine, which would be advancing it. And I should see my idle speed up. I'm already a thousand forty. That's about it, thousand fifty. Uh, so it increased my idle. Now I'm gonna decrease it. Pretty much at six degrees, and it's at eight sixty. I'm at about. That's where my. I think I'm, eh, let's see here. Actually, right at about top dead center, it's 840. It's starting to make a little noise. I don't think it likes being right at top dead center. So. So I just wanted to demonstrate how just moving the distributor can affect your idle. So you want to keep that in mind when you're adjusting your car. Now, let's just set our timing. Okay, so everything's all set up and going right into that. Uh, where I just left it by hand, it's at 14. You already know what to do. You just loosen your bolt, have your timing gun, and you move it clockwise or counterclockwise. And to advance it, you go counterclockwise. So all I'm going to do is put it right back on 12 where I want it. Right there. Snug it down. really hard to see on camera but basically mine is sitting at about 12 12 degrees before top dead center I really could use a freshening up on the markings Right on the money. And of course, if you're looking at this with this unplugged, you won't see it advance at all. But then you can connect this and you can see it advance. I'm dead on 12. 
and we're at about 980. I run my idle a little high because I have a Weber and I run the air condition and when I cut the air on it'll kick the idle down some and it's hot here in Mississippi so the air is on quite a bit so I don't mind in the summer it being idled a little high. I don't have any dieseling problems when I cut it off or anything like that. Alright, let's see if we can do this. So we're inside the vehicle and that's where I'm saying it's idling at when you're inside and when you cut the air on, it drops down to there. Not too bad. Perfect. So now, alright, so I unpinched it. You see, there's really no vacuum on it at idle. It's not even, it didn't even change how the engine ran, like the vacuum leak or anything like that. So I'm going to hook it up. Again, I just wanted to do it by the book. I know someone, if, if I didn't do it, someone would complain about what I'm doing. So now that it's connected, and if I'm looking through here, and of course, I can't show you that all of the, what I'm seeing because of the uh, frames per second won't match the camera, so you won't be able to see it like I'm seeing it, but it's right on 12, and it will advance, the, the little, the strobe will advance as, since this is hooked up, as I give it some gas. And so it goes and it stops at a certain point. It could be, you know, whatever the timing curve is on this engine. I'll have to look that up. But uh, it's look, looking like it's pegging out at around, could be 35 or 30. It's hard to tell. It's hard to tell because I don't have enough grading on my um, timing cover to tell me where it is. Running good though. It says I'm at about a thousand. And always keep you a handy dandy screwdriver. So I'm gonna idle it down just a hair. Just a little bit. I don't know. Okay, I like that. It's about 949.50. So, and it didn't take but a little bitty bit. So, I'm going to leave it right there. Yep, right on 12. Pretty sure I tightened that up. Oops, didn't get too crazy with it. Yeah. where I want it. Yeah. Good to go. Alright, that about wraps it up. I hope that helps some of you that didn't know how to time your engine before. Uh, I would suggest just putting it at like 12 degrees. That's a good all-around number for any carburetor, but uh, the Weber or the one you're currently running. It'll, it'll be great. So just run that. Uh, you're in a safe zone. You're not too far advanced uh, where you might risk some pinging and you're not too low where there's low power. I mean, this does increase horsepower a little bit, so it's a great thing to do. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.